Stan Jabalisco here. Uh, I'm going to continue the discussion of quarter wave sections of transmission line and some of their interesting properties. What you're looking at right here is a sort of a generic drawing of ladder line measuring one quarter of an electrical wavelength. Remember that when you calculate this quarter wavelength you need to take the velocity factor of the transmission line into account. In most cases the velocity factor of a ladder line like this would be about 90 percent or 0 0.9 meaning that radio waves travel along this line or electromagnetic fields travel along this line at nine tenths of the speed of light and when you have a quarter wave section of line like this with a purely resistive impedance at one end and a purely resistive impedance at the other end and a characteristic impedance of Z sub zero as you see here then you are always going to see this mathematical relationship. The characteristic impedance will equal the geometric mean of the resistive impedances at the ends that is under ideal conditions meaning when these impedances are purely resistive you will get the perfect match with this line perfect match not meaning one to one SWR but meaning that everything's going according to the ideal set of circumstances okay this is the formula you are going to see. If x and y happen to be equal, then they're going to have to be equal to the characteristic impedance in order for this to work. For example, if x and y are both 300 ohms and the characteristic impedance is 300 ohms, then it's, this, is, this reduces to triviality. 300 equals the square root of 300 times 300. Okay. And we also showed that um, as x decreases, y increases. So if you have, say, you start out with 300 ohms at x and 300 ohms at y, and z sub 0 equals 300 ohms. We're using that as just an example here for convenience. Then as x goes down from 300 ohms, y will go up, but they will remain uh, purely resistive impedances. Contrary-wise, if x goes up, y will go down. Now you can well imagine that as x increases without limit, y will approach zero. In fact, you can demonstrate that by plugging a whole lot of numbers into this formula. Similarly, as x approaches zero, that is, gets smaller and smaller and smaller and approaches zero, y will increase without limit, which makes for a very interesting set of circumstances that we can consider as extremes. Let's just suppose for a moment, take the, let's take the x and the y away from there, put them up here. Let's suppose that we are looking, here's our eyeball, we are looking at x and we have y over here that we can vary. As we increase y more and more, we will get less and less at x. We keep y as a resistive, pure resistance that just gets greater and greater. In the extreme, y will reach what we call infinity. I'm going to put that in quotes because it's kind of an esoteric thing to talk about an infinite resistance. What that really means is an open circuit here at y. What we're going to see at x at, remember, at the frequency where this thing is resonant at a quarter of a wavelength, what we're going to see at x is a short circuit.
circuit. The equivalent of a short circuit. This behaves like a resonance circuit. In fact, it mimics the characteristics of a resonant inductance capacitance circuit in the series configuration. If, and on, on the other hand, we decrease y and we keep decreasing it until we get it all the way down to zero, then we have a short circuit at y. And we can, in fact, just short out the terminals and get a zero resistance here. We're going to see at this end an infinite pure resistance or an open circuit, in which case this particular section of transmission line, remember, we always have to, to stay at the resonant frequency. If we vary the frequency up and down, then we get characteristics of a parallel inductance capacitance circuit, like this. So when we short circuit the far end of a quarter wavelength transmission line, we get the equivalent of a parallel resonant circuit at this end. If we open up the far end of the line, we get the equivalent of a series resonant inductance capacitance circuit. Resonant at the frequency where this line measures one quarter of a wavelength. So that is what makes this kind of transmission line useful at very high and ultra high frequencies because at those frequencies capacitors and inductors tend to get a little bit unstable. You need extremely small inductances and extremely small capacitances to make circuits like this work and when you have such small values they can be affected by the presence of external objects, even by things like condensation, insects crawling around, things like that. Whereas, say, at a frequency of 144 megahertz, this length of line would only be a little more than one foot. And yet that would be a perfectly reasonable, manageable contraption as it were. So that is another property of a parallel of a well a parallel resonant if you short it out at the far end of a quarter wave section of transmission line and this can work with any type of line. It can work with coax, it can work with ladder line, it can work with wide open open wire line as long as the wires are very close together in terms of a wavelength so that it behaves like a transmission line and not like an antenna. Also it will work with TV ribbon. All kinds of things that serve as transmission lines, even waveguides will do it. Even waveguides will work this way. If you've ever heard of waveguides, uh, I may someday do some videos on that particular topic, but for now that is another example of what a quarter wavelength section of transmission line can do and can be useful for. And there's still other applications too. Um, so uh, we'll uh, maybe I'll do some more videos uh, getting into those. But for now I guess this is about as much as I can yammer and surely about as much as you should be expected to digest. Stan Gibalisco proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV. Signing off for now, saying 73 and so long.